Uh, what's some hip hop rap secrets? Uh, there's tons. Uh, there are a ton of rap secrets that's going on right now. Um, like back in the day. Uh, let me see. There's the Nas on supposed to be on Keep It Rolling. The one that had Large P, Large Professor. Now she's supposed to be on that track. I think it was a conflict of recording because he did, they had did the uh, One Love song and some other songs was already coming out and and Nas album, they both was like working on the album together or something like this because Q-Tip was around at the time and he was like, yo, you know, everybody wanted to have Nas do a feature. And I don't know, from the rumor they told me, Columbia was acting a little funny, uh, saying they didn't want Nas out on their, all these singles, and then his album come out, and, you know, people get tired of Nas, or something happened on their end, and Nas, but I know, from what I heard, Nas was writing his verse on the track for Keep It Rolling, and it ended up, like, Large P ended up, you know, doing the song, and Nas wasn't on it. So I don't know if Nas ever recorded that verse to be on, like, did he record it or did he give it that verse to a large professor or, you know, I don't, I, that part, I don't know, but this was like part of hip hop lore <laughs> back then that Nas should have been on the tribes on the Marauders album. You know, he should have been on that album. Well, at the time, Nas, just think about it. Nas wasn't Nas then. You know, so anybody, imagine if you are an executive producer. Tribe was like one of the biggest groups in the world. Yeah, Nas is just some, you know, little broke kid from Queen. So, it's not like going to be an outpour. Of, How did you leave Nas off the track? That's Nas! You know, nobody, that wasn't, that didn't exist yet. <laughs> so, you know, that's just that. Uh, there's the rumor that Jay-Z snaked the uh, So Ghetto by Jay-Z. Jay-Z snuck that from Nas because that beat was supposed to go to Nas. Or, but then I heard the other side of that, that Nas turned that track down and chose the other Primo track that uh, he made for him. And the track that Nas turned down, Primo told Jay, like, yo, this the track Nas turned down. Uh, 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 and Jay was like, that's the one I want. <laughs> I'm so ghetto, ghetto girls. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, uh, uh. From what I was told, Nas thought it was more too much like Nas is like. You know, so he chose to go with another track. And you heard it on Come Get Me. Uh, Biz Marquis was supposed to do a song with EPMD, and that didn't work out. Not at all. And I have no idea how that didn't work out, but Biz Marquis was supposed to do the record, and I don't know why, but for hip-hop stories, this must have meant something, because he... Biz felt a certain way and really didn't work, you know, no more. Like, I'm not making albums no more because whatever the politics was, he was just like, forget it. I just, you know, make music for people and do parties and shows. And he's like, I'm making more money off that anyway. After having a successful album, just making a free album, you know, and to break out with the song just a friend, you know, nobody ever saw that coming.
I mean, the man, like, one of the lead songs off the album was Picking Boogers. <laughs> so he was literally a free soul making records. Uh, you got to understand, a lot of people had different rhymes. Like, they write they rhymes to different beats. And then when they don't get that track, they got to try to make the sound go with another song or they try to sync it up or they'll just redo the whole verse this happened with um showbiz and ag showbiz and ag i forgot who did the beat my god when they did silence the lambs and they did they track um i think um G Rap was supposed to do a part and they had a whole nother beat and that got flipped and once that beat got flipped or a sampling issue something happened you know studio business crap they end up had they had their verse already to the beat they went and did a, they had to go back in the studio and redo it but it wasn't enough time the studio was like, we're not going to pay. We just already got your vocals. We'll just put some new vocals to it. So if you listen to the album, you know, they cleaned it up a little bit. But some of the other songs, some of them, when they changed the beats due to, like, they couldn't get the clearances. And they tried to sync the voice up to the new track. It didn't sound too well. Um, uh, what's some more hip hop lore? Uh, Drake, his Take Care album. Somebody else, um, Forty didn't do the mixing on that album, and that's probably why I thought it was terrible. <laughs> but the mixing is the only Drake album he's like he has a hard time listening to, and I and I understand it. It's different. And when you're not used to working with certain people and how how they do it, and you're used to and accustomed to a way, and you work with new people who are not used to working with you, you know, this situation has happened. And during the mix and mastering process, it didn't come out right. You know, his vocals didn't sound, you know, the way he would be satisfied. And I and I heard it in a lot of the songs on the Take Care album. But people love that album. So, it is what it is. But Marvin Room is fire. Straight fire. Now, having said that, let's move forward. The notion that this only happened to him, this happened with Tupac on his second album. Strictly for my Nick. And he did that album. Similar situation. Everything was supposed to be worked out. And before you know it, all hell broke loose. Everything's supposed to be all good. Wasn't all good. All hell broke loose. And everybody was responsible. <laughs> you know, so it is what it is. But Tupac was not happy with the way they tried to change his voice. Tupac went back in there and made them, the engineers, and everybody redo the song. And he made, um, what's that, Interscope? They had to pay the engineers to go back and do it. Tupac was not going to put that record out when it sounded all crazy because the guy who had mixed it and who hadn't worked with him before screwed it up Pac just said just admit you fell asleep <laughs> you fell asleep I just wish I've heard it I just heard that story so many times like Pac was all over them engineers he had them working on that album and he was all fired up too so 
I just wish I'd have saw it. I could just imagine that. That would have been pretty interesting. Um, more stories. Rakim walking out of a studio. Rakim walked out of the studio and said he was done with Dr. Dre. I've heard that story too. They said Rakim walked out the studio. They thought he went to the bathroom. Dude grabbed all his stuff. <laughs> Out the room, went straight to the airport, got on the plane, went back to New York. <laughs> straight walked out of the studio to the booth, no words to nobody. <laughs> they thought he probably went home to the, went straight to the airport, got on the plane, went home. So whatever happened in their studio, Dr. Dre and Rakim. <laughs> Come on, Ra. Just sing the song. Say, yo, I bust my mag right in your face. Yeah, straight flagging. West Coast bragging. Man, I'm not with that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not squeezing a gun in nobody's face. Nobody, no, man, it's just the lyrics, man. It's just a song. Nah, I ain't with that. I could write my own lyrics. And I ain't writing about shooting dudes. Man, it's, it's just selling records, man. <laughs> and that was it. He probably stepped right out, jumped on a plane, and got out of there. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see how it all develops. You know, everything right now is at a point where it's new. Everything is brand spanking new. So what you want to do is make sure you're doing everything in your power to continuously do the things the right way. You know? Oh, the singer Crystal Johnson. I'll never forget it. Uh, Havoc, Havoc screwed up. He tried to overcharge Nas for a track that wasn't his, that he actually got from Alchemist. Alchemist was making the beats, and he was basically trying to steal it and go try to sneak over and track the beat. He's been known to do this before, but he tried to do it with Alchemist, and it led to a lot of problems. Because Alchemist was like, hey, wait a minute. Nah. He didn't realize that Alchemist had already sent that track to Nas. So when Nas heard it again, like, have, you know, I want to know if you want to get out on this song and this and that. That's why he's a little leery, you know, about getting down on the record. Because he's like, wait a minute, I thought you did have play this for me. Nas already had it. Because Alchemist had the heat. Yeah, at that time, Havoc was trying to get people to basically do all the work. He'd pay him a flat fee. And then he'll come in and track, track the beat. Yeah, well, you know, it's a it's a whole different situation. Man, everybody wanna hit me up, okay. But it's a different situation back then because you never really know 
like I never followed up to find out. You know, these are just stories people talk about all the time. And hip hop lore. Oh yeah, Steve Rifkin, he has Sonali then. Used to bring her in there and show her off. And then he'll take her in the bathroom, do a little blow. Then he'll come out. And this is when he was at Universal. And Mob Deep and RZA and all them dudes was thinking about suing him. Because he had owed them so much money. And Mob Deep was like, man, this dude owed us about at least 600000 And he screwed up all our albums. And Prodigy didn't, couldn't stand him because he was like, man, he just left us out there. And the only people that ever made money for that label was Bob Deep and Wu-Tang. You know, and this dude screwed us over. You know, and he was like, you know how many millions my album would have sold? Had they did it right, they didn't promote the HNIC the way they were supposed to. And they, they postponed it, kept postponing it, because they was having money problems, the label. So they ended up screwing up his album. He's like, my album could have sold like two and a half million. And he screwed me all up. And then Havoc album was coming out right behind it. So he screwed all that up. And everybody's like, what did he do with the money? And he's like, man, you know that dude got a problem with his nose. <laughs> you know, the dude probably didn't snort it up all the blow, all the money. But the fact of the matter is he kept signing groups and approving budgets, trying to expand, 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 expand. And what he was doing is these groups weren't selling records like that. <laughs> so now you need Wu-Tang and Mob Deep to make the quota. And if they out start to dip, then you're going to have problems. And that's what started to happen. They started doing cutbacks, couldn't put the money in certain places it used to go. And then this is the fallback of it. The blowback. But anyway, I've kept you guys too long going down hip-hop lane. So, I'm going to let that be that. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button. Select all and don't also forget to hit my cash app up, Carcino. And my Patreon is Carcino for Life. You can click the link in the description box and knock yourself out and have a ball. Enjoy the rest of the day.